Hello. So last time what we talked about was the first fundamental theorem of calculus, which helped us to evaluate definite integrals without going through a limiting and summation process. So what we're going to talk about today is two things. We're first going to talk about the average value of a function on any interval, and then we're going to talk about the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which is another really important result, which is why, of course, it's called the fundamental theorem. So before we can talk about the average value of a function on an interval, we first have to talk about what the mean value theorem for integrals is. So we already had a mean value integral um, theorem back with derivatives, so now we're going to, of course, have one for integrals. So what this theorem says is that if f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, then there is going to exist a number c in between a and b, um, such that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is just going to be equal to b minus a, times the function value at c, which this um, definition right here is going to lead directly to finding the average value for a function over an interval. So this is important to know. It's not the most important thing to know, but it's a nice little theorem to have memorized. But what it leads to is the average value of a function on an interval. And to find the average value of a function, all you have to do is do 1 minus b over a times the integral from a to b of f of x. Of course, you have to meet the conditions that the function is integrable on a to b. So in other words, you know how to take the integral of it. But all you do to find the average uh, value then is you multiply by 1 over b minus a. So let's see how that works out. So we're going to find the average value of 3x squared minus 2x from 1 to 4. So 1 minus b over a is just going to be 1 over 4 minus 1. And we're going to do the integral from a to b, so 1 to 4 of 3x squared minus 2x dx, which is just going to be equal to 1 third. And then using our power rule, we're going to get 3 times x to the 2 plus 1 over 3 minus 2 times x to the 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, all evaluated from 1 to 4, using our power rule and then our first fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're going to get 1 third. Our 3s here will cancel out. Our 2s here will cancel out. We're going to get just x cubed minus x squared, evaluated from 1 to 4. So we're going to leave the 1 third out front and multiply it in at the end. So we're going to put the 4 in first. So 4 cubed is 64 minus 16 for 4 squared minus. 1 cubed is 1, minus 1 squared is 1. So the great thing about this one is this quantity right here is going to 0. So we really have 1 third times 16, um, 64 minus 16. Do the math off to the side real quick. So 14 minus 6 is going to give us 8. So we're going to get a 48. So what we're going to get here is 48 divided by 3, which is just 16. So that's how you go about finding the average value of the function. So this is the average value. Oops, forgot the word value. Of f of x on 1 to 4. So if you graphed the function between 1 and 4 and then drew the line at y equals 16, um, it should show that your area, in other words, balances out on the other side. You should have equal values below and equal values above. So that's how you go about using that. So now what we're going to talk about, which is a little bit more important, and this is probably going to be the heftier part of the video, is the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So what this theorem says is that if f of x is continuous on an open interval, and we're going to call that interval i, and somewhere in that interval is this point a. So if you're continuous over this whole interval and you take an x value at a, if for every x in the interval, if you were to take the derivative of the definite integral from a to x of f of t dt, that's just equal to f of x. So this t here is what we call a dummy variable. And that's just because it's in place of something else. So it's in place of what we normally say for x. So in other words, you don't want the x here to match up with the dummy variable here. Because if it does, since we're taking the derivative with respect to x, 
we're taking the derivative of this thing, really. So we don't also want to have to take the derivative of t. So that's why we call it a dummy variable. You just put a different variable in place of it. So now we're going to do two examples to see how this works. So we're going to do d dx of 0 to x of the square root t squared plus 1 dt. So the first thing you want to do before you apply the second fundamental theorem is make sure that this bottom number is a constant. So since we have a constant, we can immediately apply it. So all you have to do is plug the variable on top into t and simplify. So all we're going to get is that the derivative of this integral is just going to be equal to x squared plus 1. Now, if you ever do a problem like this and you know how to integrate whatever is inside, you could do it the long way by actually integrating and then evaluating it from the constant to the x and then taking the derivative. but for instance, this was a problem that you guys don't know how to integrate yet. You'll learn how to integrate this in Calc 2. So once you're further along into calculus, you'll learn a lot more integration methods. So you'll be able to do a lot more problems. But using the second fundamental theorem of calculus, you don't have to know how to actually integrate it. You just have to know how to apply the rules. So the next one we're going to do is a little bit harder. And it's because we don't have constants at either end of the integral. And notice that the derivative of x is 1, so d dx of x is 1. But when we look at the top one, d dx of x cubed is equal to 3x squared. So because of that, we actually have to take into account the chain rule. So what we need to do first is we need to split this up, this integral up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to let, just pick a constant to be in between them. It doesn't matter. So why don't we use 0? So instead, we're going to go from, from x to 0 of the cosine of t dt plus 0 to x cubed of the cosine of t dt. And now, the second fundamental theorem of calculus always has the constant on the bottom. So this first integral is upside down. But when we learned about definite integrals before, we knew that to flip it over, all you have to do is add a negative sign on the bottom, and then you can switch the order of the limits of integration. So now we're going to get this. And so now what we can do, since we have the derivative of the sum of two things, is we can distribute that derivative symbol. We could take the derivative of each individual Part, and then we're just going to add them together, just like we did when we did normal derivatives. So this is why knowing all those integral properties is really important, because it can help you evaluate things like this. So doing the derivative of the first one is really easy because we just have that x on top. So since we just have an x, we don't have to worry about the chain rule here because the derivative of x is 1. So we're just going to plug in x wherever we see a t. So what we're going to get is we're just going to get negative cosine of x. So now to evaluate the derivative of the second integral, we're going to plug in the x cubed everywhere we see a t. But then we also have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of x x cubed. So we're going to get cosine of x cubed times 3x squared. So we can just rewrite it maybe a little bit. Do 3x squared cosine of x cubed plus, I'm sorry, minus cosine of x. So that would be your final answer um, using the second fundamental theorem of calculus. But let's do this one longhand because we know how to do the integral of cosine of t. We know that the, cos the integral of cosine is just the sine. So instead, we can plug in and use the first fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate this, and then take the derivative of the whole thing and see what we get. So we know that that's just going to be sine of x cubed minus the sine of x. So if we throw our derivative sign on here, now 
squared is going to take the derivative of this whole thing. Well, the derivative of the sine of x cubed is just going to be the cosine of x cubed. Using the chain rule, we know we have to put tack on the 3x squared minus cosine of x. Well, that's exactly what we have up here. So that's another way you can always check yourself using these problems. So whenever you have something, a limit of integration over here, like x cubed, that doesn't have a derivative of 1, you have to use your chain rule and after you plug it in, multiply on by the derivative of whatever that limit is. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you out with the average value of a function on an interval and how to use the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which I know can be really tricky, but have a great rest of your day.